Hi, I'm Bo Carnes, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create Conway's Game of Life using React. You don't need to know a lot already, but you should be a little familiar with some React concepts. If you need to, to learn about React or just need a refresher, you can check out my React Basics video, which should be linked on the screen right now. Also, um, there is a GitHub repo that goes along with this, so you can follow along, uh, you should be following along on your own computer, but you can use the GitHub repo if you get lost. So you can check the link in the description for that. Well, let's get started. As you can see here, the Game of Life is a cellular automaton developed by John Conway. And it's, it's called a zero player game. Uh, basically, you set the initial state and then you just watch what happens. So each cell on the board has certain rules. So if we go down here, each cell is going to live or die based on the cells around them. Any live cell with fewer than two neighbors dies, as if causing underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three neighbors lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation, and any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. So just these rules can create the board that's going to be constantly moving. So in this game, we have the play button. We have a pause button that's going to stop everything. We can also clear all the cells and we can seed, so we can just add live cells. I'm gonna hit the play button, and I can change the speed to fast. There's two speeds, fast or slow, and then we can change the grid size. So here's the small grid size, we have to seed it again, and then here's the large grid size. So let's get started on how to create this. Okay, I'm over in the terminal now, and I'm going to use Create React App to build a new React application. This is going to set up your development environment so that you can use the latest JavaScript features, and it provides a nice developer experiences, plus it optimizes your app for production. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure I have Node.js installed. And I have version 8.0.0. Okay, good. Now I just have to install the Create React app. So we'll do npm install and create React app. Okay, that's installed. Now I cleared my screen and I'm just going to use Create React app to create our app. So I'll just do Create React app game of life. Okay, Create React app now just set up everything for us. This just creates a default app and we can actually run that by doing npm start. Nope, we have to switch into the folder first. So let's do cd game of life. Now we do npm start. So now we just go to localhost colon 3000 in our web browser and you can see the default page that Create React App made. We're gonna make some changes to this, obviously. Okay, I just open up our newly created folder in Sublime Text. You can really use any text editor for this. We're gonna start off by changing some things from the default um, app. So we're gonna go into the source file, and I'm gonna delete most of these files. So I'm gonna delete all of these files. Right click delete. And this file, this file, delete. So all we should have left in the directory is the index.css and the index.js. In React, most of our program is going to be in index.js. So we're going to go in here and delete some of this stuff in here. And now we just have a really basic thing. So first we're gonna import React from React and import React DOM from React DOM. And we're gonna need those things to run React. And right here we have React DOM.render app document .get ID by, by ID root. So if we go over to our public folder and in index.html, you'll see this is the HTML page. And down here we have the div with ID root. So 
this is where our entire React app is going to load. Let's just change the name instead of React app, Game of Life. I'll save that. Let's go back to our um, index. And then just to see if this works, let's just try, try changing this really quick. So we're going to do P Hello World. And we have to run our server again. So to actually see the page that you're creating, you have to have this server running. And it's going to just automatically update the page whenever you save a file. Okay, and you can see it says hello world right on the page. So if you are using Sublime Text for React, you should probably install uh, Babel. That's gonna help with the syntax highlighting for JSX. So you're just gonna do Shift Command P, and then you're gonna type package, install package, and then when you have the list, you'll just do Babel. Now I already have it installed, but once you have it installed, to make sure it highlights correctly, you should go to View, Syntax, Open All Current Extension As, and here you're going to go to Babel, and then JavaScript Babel. And you can see the syntax highlighting just changed as soon as I did that. Okay, in React, your page is made up of a bunch of components, and there will be components inside of components. So our main component is just something that holds the entire page. And then we're going to create a component ju that just holds the buttons here. Then we're going to have a component that just holds the board, the entire board. And then each individual square in the board is going to be its own component. So let's start off by making the component that has the entire page. This is just going to be called main. So instead of having hello world in here, it's going to say main. And right up here, I'm going to have class main extends react.component. So each component in React is going to have a render method that's going to render what's actually going to show up on the web page. So I'm going to start by writing that. Render. And inside this return is where I'm going to put the JSX, which is pretty similar to HTML to show what's going to be inside the page. Anything in your return method for JSX, it always has to be enclosed in the exact same tag. So there has to be one tag that encloses everything. So I'm just going to have the div tag here. Let me change my um, t spacing here. So everything that we're going to do is going to be enclosed in this div tag. Let me put this over here. So first we're just going to have an h1 tag to give a title, the game of life. And the next thing, we are going to put in some buttons right under the title, but first let's create our grid. So inside our grid, we're going to pass in some properties, but we still have to create those. Before we pass in the properties, let's just put our final, our final thing on the page, which is going to be at the very bottom. It's going to tell how many generations we've had. And to get how many generations, we're going to have to create a variable or a state variable that's going to show how many generations there are. I haven't created that yet, but we're just going to put it in here as this.state.generation. In React, pretty much all your variables should be stored as a state or a prop. A state variable belongs to whichever component created that variable or should be in charge of that variable. So each variable is held mainly by one component as its state. And if you're going to pass that variable to other components, that variable becomes a prop. All of our variables are going to be stored as state in the, the main component, and then we can pass them to other components as props. So we'll see how that works in just a minute here. Now that we've started to create some state here, let's actually define the state. We're going to do that in a constructor. So we'll go constructor. So in our constructor, we're going to always going to start with calling super, and then we're going to create our state. This dot state equals 
And I'm just going to start with one thing. Generation 0. So we're going to start at generation 0. And we're going to try to get to the point where we can test this as soon as possible. So the only thing we have to do now is create a simple grid component. Because here, we're bringing in the grid. So since we're referencing another component, there has to be another component for it to display correctly. So I'm going to create another class here, class grid extends react.component. And we're going to have our render method. And inside, we're always going to return what we want to render. Right now, we're just going to return the word grid. Now I'm going to save this. Our server is still running in the console. If we go back to the browser, it has been updated. So it says the game of life. Our grid, that's from our grid component, generations, and then zero. Remember, that's from our state. We have generation zero. Okay, now we have a basic start to our React project. Before we go any further, I want to create the CSS. So as we keep testing, we'll look how it's supposed to look. So I'm just going to open index.css here. There's already some CSS here from when this was automatically created. So we're just going to delete that. And since this tutorial is mainly about React and not CSS, I'm just going to paste in some CSS here. If you check the GitHub link in the description, you can get a link to all this code. And you can actually copy and paste the CSS for your file too. So let's move this over. And I'll just briefly go over this. We're going to use this background image, which is just a repeating background image that I thought would look nice for this program. The box is going to be for all the, the box components. You can see width 15, height 15. So it's going to be just a, a box. And we're just changing some of the display and the border. There's going to be a border so you can see it's a box. And just so it goes up against each other, the margin left and margin bottom is just so when there's a one pixel border around the whole box, it, there's not going to be two pixels border when two boxes are right next to each other. And then we have a box that's off is going to be light gray. A box that's on is going to be green. And when you hover over the box, it's going to be a color too. It's going to be this blue color. Now, here we just have something to center. This is just a helper class to center content on our page. And then all the boxes are going to be inside a grid. It's going to be 150 pixels wide. And then there's also going to be a, a box shadow. And all these things are just going to help the boxes look correctly when they're inside the grid. And then all our headings are going to look like this. Except heading 4, we're just going to make sure there's a margin top of 0 pixels. So now the rest of this tutorial will just be in the JavaScript file. All the other files are completely set up how they're going to be set up. So I'm just going to hide the sidebar so we can focus just on this code here. Okay, let's go back to the main component. And we're going to add some more state variables. And also we're going to just add some class properties. You generally want to have all your variables as state variables. Because when a state variable changes, it will automatically propagate through the rest of your program and will automatically update every place where that state variable is. But sometimes it's okay to just use a class property or just a variable right in your class. And that is, that is when you're not going to need to have that propagate throughout the whole app. Also, if you want to reference a variable when you first create your state, you cannot reference a state variable from within your state when you're creating the state. Uh, that will make more sense when I show you. We're going to have this.speed equals 100. That's how fast the program is going to be running. We have this.rows equals 30. This is how many rows in the grid. This.calls, that's the columns, is going to equal 50. And the reason why I don't have these in the state is because I'm going to reference the rows and the columns when I originally create the state. So I'm going to have grid full. This is what the full grid is going to be like. We're going to create an array that's as big as the rows variable. And we're going to fill that with a, a map where we're going to create another array, which is big as the columns variable. 
and each element in that array is false. This is just creating a 50 by 30 grid, which is a two-dimensional array, and every element in that array is set to false. That just means every grid cell is turned off to begin with. So now that we have these variables, let's go back down to our render method, and inside the grid, we're gonna pass these variables, these state variables and these properties, as props into our grid component. We're passing the full grid, we're passing the rows, and we're passing the columns. So now we can use all these things as props in the grid component. So up in this grid component, first I'm gonna fill in the JSX that we're gonna return, and this is gonna use some variables and some other things that we're then, then gonna create afterwards. So it's not gonna say grid anymore, because we're actually gonna put a grid in there. Let's start by adding some, some things to this div. So we're going to put class name. Now class name is just the same as class, but since class is a reserved word in JavaScript, for JSX you have to use class name. So in HTML it's class, JSX it's class name. I'm going to put grid. Now this is going to come directly from our CSS, so that's how we're going to style this. And we're also going to add an inline style. Width is going to equal width because the width is going to change depending on how big the grid is and this is just going to be a variable that we still have to create the only thing else we're going to do in here inside the div we're going to put the rows array now this is just an array of all the rows in the grid which we have to create and we're going to do that right above the return method we're going to create some other things first of all the width so let's do a const width and it's going to be this.props.calls. So this.props.calls is from down here. When we pass in these rows and calls here, this, these become props in the child component. So now we have this.props.calls, and it's the same thing we passed in from the parent. And we're just going to multiply this by 14. And this will just get the width that we need. And we're going to create the rows array. So first it's going to just be an empty array. And this is where we're going to add everything to the rows array that will show up in the grid. Var box class. This is something we're going to use while we're creating the array. And here we're going to have some loops here. So for var i equals zero. Now I'm going to have a nested for loop since there are, is a nested array. And this next nest is going to be very similar to this. So I'm just going to copy that. And this.props.calls. And instead of I, I'm going to do Command D to select the next three. And switch it to J. Except this one needs to switch back to I. Iterations like this are commonly performed using the map method over an array to map an array of data to UI elements. But to make this more clear of what I'm doing. I'm just using two nested for loops. But this would often be done with a map. I'm going to have let box ID equals I. So this is just going to create the ID that's going to go along with each box element. And the box class is going to e either be on or off. So equals this dot props dot grid full. So we're going to check in the grid that we've passed in. We're going to check at the specific spot in the grid. And we're going to check to see if it's true or false. If it's true, that means it's on. And it's going to be false if the box is turned off. This is going to be a ternary operator. True, box, on. Or false, box, off. And this will just be classes that we get from our CSS to show what color the box is gonna be. Now we're gonna start pushing things onto our array. And we can actually push JSX right onto our array. So that's what I'm gonna put here, a box. Now we're pushing a box component, which we haven't created yet. But inside the box component, we're gonna have a box class. This is gonna equal the box class. 
That's what we just created. We're also going to have a key, box ID, which we just created. And the box ID, which we just created. So these are both going to be box ID. Row is I. Call is J. And select box. So, so far we've just passed in variables, but you can also pass in a method or a function that's going to be called. So this is going to be this.props.selectbox. So if we're passing in this.props.selectbox, selectbox has to be a prop. Well, selectbox isn't a prop because we haven't passed it in down here. So let's just do that right now. Select box equals this dot select box. Like I said, that's going to be a function that we still have to create. We're going to do that in just a minute. But first let's go up here and finish off this box here. So that's the end of the box. So we are pushing a bunch of boxes onto the array. And then down here, we just put that whole array in here. We can't see it quite yet. If we just save this, and then we go into our uh, terminal. Oh, and that was a mistake. That wasn't a mistake because I hadn't finished it yet. That was a mistake just because I made a mistake. If we go down here, this was supposed to be a squiggly brace. And now I'll save. I'll go back into the, the terminal. And now it just says box is not defined. Now this error is because we still have to create that. We're going to create that next. Back to the code, let's make the box. So I'm going to create a new class up here. This will be the smallest one we've created so far. Class box extends react.component just like the one right below here. And we're going to have a render method. And this is just going to be JSX. So first we're going to return it. Div. This is just going to be one div actually. But we're going to put the class name, which is just a class, as this.props.boxclass. And I did not need these quotation marks. And then the ID is going to be this.props.id. And finally, we're going to have an onClick function. So onClick, we're going to call this.selectbox. Now we did pass in this.props.selectbox, but the reason we're calling this.selectbox instead of this.props.selectbox is because I'm going to create its own select box function right here. Oh, before I do that though, I am going to need to end this div tag. There's just gonna be a slash and then an arrow. And let's put semicolon there. Now here is going to be the box's own select box function. Now when we're creating functions in here, they're all going to be arrow functions because we need to have the word this bound appropriately. If we don't make it an arrow function, when we write the word this inside the function, it won't be referring to the right this. This.props.selectbox. So we're calling the, the function from the props. But this time, we're going to pass in something. So the reason why we're creating our own select box inside box and not just calling the props is because now we have to pass in these things. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to pass in anything to this.props if it's inside the render method. Okay, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this file. And let's go back over to our web browser. Got a new error. Objects are not valid as React child. Here's the problem. We have too many curly braces here. Um, so up here, we need two curly braces because we're, we're within a tag. But when you're not inside a tag, you only need one curly brace. So let's change this. And we'll make a few other changes. 
I noticed that I do need a semicolon here. And now let's save this and we'll go back to the browser. It's loading, automatically reloads, and you can see something. The grid is there. As you can see, we have this extra space here. So we're going to have to figure out how to get that off. Now that seems to have to do with how wide this is. If we go back into the CSS, you'll see that the box is 15 pixels wide and it's also going to have one extra border. So it's actually going to be 16 pixels wide plus one pixel. We have the, the negative one here, but on one side of the whole grid, there's going to be an extra pixel there. This should really be maybe 16 because that's how many pixels there are. And then we would just do plus one. So let's try that. 16 plus 1. Save that and see what happens. And maybe I didn't need to add that plus 1. It looks like there's an extra dark line over there. I'm going I'm to zoom in really quick. Oh, maybe it's because I was already zoomed in a little bit. So if, I, if, I, if I'm at 100%, I don't see an extra line. So we just fixed that. Okay, it's time to add some methods to our main component. You'll see that this on click is this.selectbox, but this.selectbox is this.props.selectbox, but this select box is this.props.selectbox. So actually, this method is being passed through two children components. So it comes from the main component, then gets passed to the grid component, then gets passed to the box component. We still have to create it on the main component you'll see on the main component, all we have is constructor and render. We're still going to have to make a few more methods. So let's create the this.props.select box. So right under constructor, I'm going to do select box equals, now this is going to be an arrow function. Remember, like I was saying, it has to appropriately bind this. Remember, we can tell if a box is selected, in this array. You can see when we create the array, everything's false. If a box is selected, it will be set to true. So we need to update this array with what has been selected and set that to true. So we are going to select a row and a call. I forgot we pass in row call. And instead of updating this.state directly, we're going to have to make a copy of an array and then do a set state command to update the state. In React, you're never supposed to update the state directly. So whenever you have an array, it's best practice just to make a copy of the array first. So we're going to do let grid copy equal array clone. Now this is a function I still have to create. This.state.gridful. And so this array clone function, this is a helper function. We're going to have to clone an array a few times. So I just have this helper function. Um, this helper function, you can see it doesn't have the word this on it because I'm going to create it at the very bottom outside of our component right here. We're going to say this is just going to be a normal function. You pass in an array. And to copy, we just do this, um, this trick where you stringify it and then you parse it and it will make a, a clone of the array, a deep clone. If this wasn't a nested array, we could just do array.slice, but since it's a nested array, we have to do a deep clone where it will clone all the arrays inside the arrays. So let's go back up to here and we're going to set grid copy. So we're going to find the exact square that was clicked and we're going to set it to the opposite. So if it was true, it will be false. If it was false, it will be true. Now this is what we call the set state function. So this dot set state. Whenever you're updating state, you should do it through this dot set state. Okay, let's save that and test it out. Let's see if it works. Compiling and loading. It works. If I click a square, it stays green. So now we're going to create two more methods. 
One is going to be to seed the board, so it will automatically start with, with random squares selected, and then we need to have way, some way to start the game. So right under select box, let's create seed. And I'm going to have to create another copy of the grid, so I'm just going to copy this line right up here. And now we are going to do some more for loops because we're I'm going to have to go through every square of the grid and decide whether to turn it on or leave it off. And then I'm going to randomly choose whether the, the square gets turned on or not. So let's create that function to randomly choose something. So if math.floor math.random times 4 equals 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 1. So we're going to create a random number between 0 and 4. And if it equals one, we're going to do something. Grid copy equals true. So we have a 25% chance of turning on each square in the grid. Oh, see this in parentheses, that actually should be at the end of this if statement up there. And then we just have to set state. I'm going to copy it right from up here. This dot set state grid full to grid copy. Now we want the game to seed right away. So to make something happen as soon as everything is loaded, there is a life cycle hook. This is a method that will run when a certain thing happens. So we're gonna use component did mount. So as soon as everything's loaded, it's gonna run this this method here and everything inside it. So this dot seed. So now, if I save it, it should seed the grid. Let's see if this works. Nope. Let's see what we did wrong. Let's see if C is even being run. So let's do a console.log, and I'm just going to say seed. So let's see. Um, it's compiling. I'm going to have to open up the JavaScript console. It says seed, so seed is being run, but for some reason it's not working correctly. Let's see if it's getting into here. Random, okay. Okay, it's not even getting into the part where it assigns the random number. Ooh, I have a parenthesis in the right, the wrong spot. So this parenthesis here should go right there. Okay, let's take off these console. I'm pretty sure this is going to work. So let's take off these console.logs and then we'll actually test it. So save it. Compiling. And it's seeded. It worked. Awesome. Now we just have to make things move along. So every generation, something should change in here. The squares should change based on the rules we talked about earlier. So we're going to have to set those rules up right now. So let's go back over to our code. So we're going to have to have something happen on an interval. So we're going to have two functions. One function that starts the interval and then starts calling another function that will run on an interval. So the first one is going to be called play button because eventually this will be associated with a button, a play button on the screen. And we'll set the interval ID to equal set interval this.play this.props.speed. So set interval is going to start calling this.play at the interval here, this.props.speed. Remember we start, started the speed off at 100, so that's 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, we're going to call this.play and we're going to set this this.interval.id because that's how you stop the interval and in fact if someone clicks the play button we want everything to start over so here I'm going to add a clear interval and pass in this dot 
interval ID. Uh, wait a second, this dot props dot speed. How did I do that? Oh, it's not a prop, so it's just this dot speed. But before we test this, we have to create this dot play. So let's do that right below here. This is going to be our main function for making the game actually work. We're going to start by having two copies of the grid. So let g, g for grid, equals this dot state dot grid full. And that's going to be the first copy. Let g2 equals array clone, because this has to be completely different. This dot state dot grid full. And the reason for this is we're going to start changing the squares. So we're going to have to check what the grid is currently like and then change the squares on the clone. And at the end, we're going to set the state using the clone. Now at this point, I'm actually going to paste in the code. I'm going to paste in a little piece of code and then I'll talk about it. So here is where we use all the rules from the game of life, from Conway's game of life. So we're going to create these two for loops. That means we're going to go through every element in the grid. And here is where we're going to figure out the rules. So if we go back over here. So here I have put in all these rules into the code. See if there's any li cell with fewer than two neighbors, with two or three live neighbors, with more than three live neighbors, with exactly three live neighbors, and then we figure out if it's going to die or if it's going to live. So the count is how many neighbors it has. So here we're going to go through, and if there is a neighbor, we increase the count plus one. And since each cell has eight potential neighbors. You can see there's eight lines here. And this is just how you check each neighbor. And then we have to decide if it's going to die or live. Remember, if there's less if there's less than 2 or more than 3, it dies. If it's dead and it has three neighbors, it becomes a live cell. Then we just do this dot state, we assign the grid full and then for generation, this dot state that generation plus one, or we could have put plus plus to increment it. So let's save that, and we're going to try this. Hopefully, I did everything right, because if not, we will be in a pretty bad loop here. Okay, nothing's happening. So let's see what we did wrong. Oh, in component did mount down here. I have to add one more command this dot play button to start the game. So it's going to seed it and then it's going to start the game. So now let's save it. Compiling and let's see what happens. And it's going. So we have some pretty cool things in here. Uh, unfortunately, right now, there's no way to stop it, so it's going to basically be going forever. We better create a pause button. So under this play button, we're going to create a pause button. It's going to e equal. This is pretty simple. We're just going to clear the interval. Okay, we already have two buttons here. We have the play button and the pause button, but actually we don't have any buttons yet. So let's add the buttons now. I'm going to go back down to our render for our main component, and right above the grid, below the Game of Life heading, I'm going to add buttons. This is going to be its own component. And we're just going to pass in the buttons. So play button is going to equal this dot play button. Okay, as you can see, we passed in all the buttons here. And now we have to create these buttons, all these functions. But before that, I'm going to create the buttons component. 
So let's go up here. I'm going to create the buttons component right above the main component. And inside this, we're going to have a render method. It's going to return. And in my buttons, I want to use Bootstrap. I want to use Bootstrap to style the, the buttons. But in React, it, it can't automatically use Bootstrap. So I have to install something called React Bootstrap. So if I go to this page here, react-bootstrap.github.io, this is how you can get you can easily use Bootstrap in React. So let's go to getting started. And I'm gonna have to do some things in the command line. We're gonna run this command right here, npm install save react bootstrap. So let's go over to our console. I'm gonna stop that. And I'm just going to paste in that command. Okay, I got that installed. So I'm going to, have to go back and I'm going to get Bootstrap here. So I'm going to copy this um, CDN for Bootstrap, go over to my code. I'm going to go to the index.html and I'm just going to put it right up here. So I got the Bootstrap in there. I'm going to save that. So now that I got React Bootstrap installed, I'm going to have to import some things from React Bootstrap. So let's go to the top here, and we're going to import. I'm just going to use a few things. I'm going to use the button toolbar, the menu item, and the drop down button from React Bootstrap. Okay, that's all I should need to get this to work. So now I can go back down to my buttons and start creating them. Remember, everything has to be wrapped in a tag. We're going to use a div tag. And center, this is something from the CSS there. Now everything's going to be within a button toolbar. And we're going to have our first button, where we're going to use a bootstrap class, btn, btn default. And on click, we're going to do this dot props dot play button because this is our play button. And it's going to have the text play. And then we just have to close out the button tag. And then I'm going to paste in a few more buttons here. We have the pause button, clear button, slow button, fast button, C button with the on click of the functions that we created and the props. And then we have one that's a little more complicated, which is the drop down button. So we need a title and an ID. And then we're going to have an on select function. This dot handle select which we still have to create. And actually that shouldn't be parentheses, that should be these curly braces. So we still have to create that. And then we have to put in the menu item choices. So we have the choice uh, 20 by 10. And let's just duplicate that. And event key two, three, 50 by 30, and 70 by 50. And then we'll just close out the drop down button, and we'll close out the button toolbar. And then we'll just close out the div. So now that we have this, these buttons created, we have to create this function, this.handleSelect. So I go up to the top here, handle select, and we're just going to call this.props.gridside. And since we're passing in something, we can't do it in the return render method. We have to do it in this method up here. Okay, let's see if it will let us see this yet. Now I'm going to rerun the server, npm start. Ooh, um, React Bootstrap does not contain an export name dropdown button. Because I spelled React dropdown button wrong. Okay, so let's go back up here. 
And I'm going to actually see, see if there's other places where I spell this. So I'm going to um, Command D to get every time I put drop down button. And we're going to spell it right. Drop down but button. So that should have also changed the ones down here. Yep. So let's try saving that again and compiling again. Let's see if it compiles this time. Compiled successful. So let's go over to the browser. And okay, we have a problem. Super expression must either be null or a function, not undefined. Okay, the problem is that I this component here should be a capital C. So let's go back here. Um, capital C, and now I'm gonna save that. Let's see what happens here. Let's it's gonna refresh automatically. And it works, kind of. Well, the buttons are there. This is kind of off a little bit, but we're on the right track at least. Oh, it's probably because when we added Bootstrap, it made some of the CSS kind of mess up. So we're gonna try something over here. Oh, I'm gonna change this to, let's see, 14, and let's see what happens here. Looks good, now we have all of our buttons up here. So our pause and play buttons actually work. Now we just have to get the clear, slow, fast, seed, and grid size buttons to work. So all of the functions are going to be in our uh, main component. So let's just go right down here. And we'll start with slow. Slow equals... So we just have to change the speed. So this dot speed is going to equal 1,000 or 1,000 milliseconds. And then this dot play button. So it's just going to um, start it again. Remember, when you do the play button, it's going to clear the interval, and then it's going to set a new interval with the new speed here. Slow is going to be doing basically the same thing. Uh, if we go back up here and see how our speed was default to 100, we are going to set it back to 100 because it starts at slow. So clear is going to be a little more complicated, but not too much more. Clear. We're going to set this arrow function. And just like we set the grid at the beginning, let's go back up here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. And we're going to do var grid equals and we're just going to paste that back in there. Now I'm not going to get to this in this video, but this would be a good place to refactor. Instead of creating this array two different times, we could call a function or somehow create it just once and refer to it both times. So that's something you'll be able to do on your own when you try to refactor this. And then we're going to do this dot set state. And we're going to do grid full grid, generation, zero. So we did the clear function. I think we only need one more, which is the grid size. So I'm gonna scroll down here, grid size. And remember, we're gonna pass in a size. We're not actually, the size that we're passing in isn't really the size, it's a, a number, one, two, or three. So if we, oh, First of all, before I show you that, let's change the spelling of this. Grid size. So let's go back up here when grid size is actually called. We have this.props.gridsize event. This event is going to be the event key down here. One, two, or three. It's going to be passed into the event here. Event. So we're going to get a number, one, two, or three, in the grid size function down here. So this is a good time for a switch statement. So it's going to, this size is either going to be one, two, or three. So case one, we're going to set this dot calls to equal 20, and this dot rows to equal 10. That's the small one. And then we're going to have to break. So I'm going to select this, and then Command-Shift-D, Command-Shift-D. I duplicated two times. Case 2, we're going to set this to 50, 
and 30, and then case three, or we can actually just put default, because that just means if anything else comes through. We're gonna set this to 70 and 50. And we don't need the break statement right here. And then I'm gonna call this.clear. So this.clear is just gonna reset everything. And then when it calls the this.set state, that's gonna end up updating automatically the calls in the rows. The columns in the rows from here is automatically gonna update to the this.set state. And then that will propagate through our app. So we're ready to test this out. I'm just gonna save this. Let's see if it compiles. It compiled successfully. And let's try this out. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Uh, I don't need this. Let's see, pause, play, clear, that works. Uh, I can seed. I can make it go slower, can I? Hmm, that doesn't seem to be working. This dot play button is not a function. Okay, we made a mistake over there. Let's go back. So for slow and fast, this is supposed to be a lowercase p. Save that. Oh, and I forgot to make this fast here. No wonder, you guys are probably seeing that earlier. Okay, let's save that. Um, let's see if it compiles, and it compiles, should refresh. Okay, now let's try slow. Okay, it's going slower. I like to test it by creating this thing. It's kind of like a little spaceship and see if it does, a, uh, see if this works. Let's go to fast and it's just going to go across the screen. There's a few things like that that people have figured out in the, the game of life that if you make a certain pattern, it does cool things. You can see that it got to the end and just turned into a square. That's something that you can do in refactoring. Um, uh, right now, if you get to the end, it, there's no, no squares over here. But you could refactor it to make it so, so this something like this would go completely off screen. So we can seed it while it's going. We can clear it. Um, we can seed it. Let's see if we can change the grid size. 20 by 10. Yep, that worked. Let's seed it. Um, 50, 70 by 50. That worked. Let's seed it. Play. And here's another thing you notice that when the grid size is big, this is it's, it's on the fastest speed. But you can see this is a lot slower than when the grid is small. So I, I've definitely seen some Game of Life implementations that go the same speed no matter what. So that would be another thing to look at if you're trying to refactor my code. Actually, you can kind of see why it goes so slow. If I open up the JavaScript console, um, you'll see these um, items hidden by filters. If I do default filter and I go to verbose, you can see the set interval is taking too long. It's only supposed to take, I think, I think it's 50 milliseconds. If it takes more than 50 milliseconds, it says it's taking too long. If we go to the small grid side and see that, see you're seeing it's not, it's not showing that at all. Now if we go to the medium grid size, anything over 50 milliseconds is going to say it's taking too long. But that's not really bad. That's why it, on default it doesn't even show that. So as far as refactoring the code, that's something that you can do um, to try to try to make this run even faster. So that's pretty much it for the game of life. We've completely finished this. You can check the final code on, on GitHub. If anybody sees any mistakes or if you find a way to improve this game, just do a pull request on GitHub. I'm gonna have a, a special folder I'm going to have a special folder in the repository just for improvements. So if it's a mistake, you can do a pull request to the main code. But if it's an improvement, you can create a new directory in the improvements folder and do a pull request with your, your improved file. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, use your code for good.